welcome back. Opening statements for Hunter Biden's federal gun trial set to begin this morning at 9 a.m. Eastern in Delaware. A jury of six men and six women selected yesterday, along with four alternate jurors. Now, the big surprise of the morning happened when First Lady Jill Biden and her daughter Ashley Biden appeared for jury selection. What was that about? President Biden also issued a statement in support of Hunter yesterday, saying, quote, as the president, I don't and won't comment on pending federal cases. But as a dad, I have boundless love for my son, confidence in him, and respect for his strength. Joining me now is Judicial Watch President Tom Fitton. Tom, great to see you. Thanks so much for being here. You know, it's hard not to compare everything that happened in the Hunter Biden trial to everything we just went through with the Trump trial. Your reaction to all of this? Well, it's the result of a failed cover-up, really, and corruption by the Justice Department and the FBI that try to bury this charge for years. Remember, Hunter uh, committed this crime allegedly in 2018. Now it's 2024. And uh, the only reason this trial is proceeding is because it was exposed by the worker groups like Judicial Watch, exposing the Secret Service and the FBI involvement and covering this up. And then, of course, the judge handling this case blew up the plea agreement by asking some basic questions about uh, why was Hunter given unprecedented uh, get out of jail free card, but but it, the, the, it's still being compromised by the involvement of uh, Mr. Mr. Biden, President Biden, and Jill Biden. I mean, if you're a juror and you show up at, for jury duty yesterday, and the first lady is sitting in the courtroom, what must be going through your head? And then on top of that, you have the president of the United States in a federal cr criminal trial against his son issue a statement that. Uh, um, basically echoes the defense argument, he's a poor addict, and we got to give him the benefit of the doubt. Right. Boy, oh, boy. Boy, oh, boy is right. And, and you're right to point out Jill Biden and the intimidation factor. You know, the White House did the same thing right before the jury uh, went to deliberate in the Trump case, remember, right before they went to deliberate, we heard from the White House who said after the verdict is out, President Biden is going to make a statement, and if he's acquitted or if there's a hung jury, uh, the campaign is planning attacks on Trump. I mean, who says that? Uh, right before the jury goes to deliberate, we're planning attacks. I mean, what kind of intimidation factor was that for the jury in the Trump trial? Oh, I don't want to get attacked by the White House. And then you've got Jill Biden in the courtroom. I mean, give me a break. And then, of course, there's the media. I got to get your take on this because. For weeks, we heard from Stormy Daniels, and we heard every detail that Stormy Daniels wanted to tell us about her little interlude with President Trump. But for Hunter Biden and the family, well, that's different. This is private information. Watch this. Watch how the media handled this yesterday. Watch this. The gun trial could expose personal embarrassing details of the Biden family's private life, a major distraction for President Biden as he fights for re-election. This is a historic case, but it is also a sad and sordid tale of drug addiction and its consequences in the Biden family, as in so many American families. And it carries the very real potential of personal and political pain for the president. Hunter Biden has always been open about his battles with substance abuse, but this trial is going to put some graphic details out there in open court. Oh, very personal and private information is going to come out here. Uh, woe is us. And Hunter Biden has repeatedly, and the Biden people have repeatedly used his drug abuse and alleged addiction uh, as, again, a, a vehicle to distract from uh, his criminality, and sometimes criminality involving Joe himself. You know, remember some of his testimony before Congress? Oh, I don't know if I threatened this guy with bringing the president in, Joe Biden. Uh, because I was so out of it. You know, maybe I did it while I was drunk or, or addicted to drugs. Uh, you know, it's not an excuse that would wash for anyone else facing similar charges. And it, to me, this highlights what this whole tr attack on Trump's been about. This is the soft underbelly of the Biden White House, the criminality of Joe Biden, in my view, and his family, and the accountability that has been slow, slow to come. One of the reasons it's been so slow to come is because the Justice Department's been spending all of its time trying to put his opponent in jail That's right. or helping groups like, or helping people like Alvin Bragg put his opponent in jail. 
Mm -hmm. Good point. House Judiciary Committee Chairman Jim Jordan sending a letter to House Appropriations Committee Chairman Tom Cole yesterday detailing appropriations requests for the 2025 fiscal year budget. His proposal includes a reform that would, quote, defund the lawfare activities of state and federal prosecutors who are leading politically sensitive investigations. Chairman Jordan pointing out Manhattan DA Alvin Bragg, New York Attorney General Letitia James, Fulton County DA Fonnie Willis, and Special Counsel Jack Smith. The request coming days after President Trump's guilty verdict in New York, Tom, Attorney General Merrick Garland is also set to appear before the Judiciary Committee today. We'll see how that hearing goes. What's your reaction to all of that? Well, obviously, it's important that that be done. There's got to be a consequence. I just wish it had been done earlier and sooner. Uh, the House had a leverage point to shut down these investigations in the government funding fights that we saw earlier this year. They declined to do so. And now that President Trump has been uh, convicted, uh, they're going to take action that may not even happen till next year. Uh, it, it's certainly necessary, but it, it's woefully insufficient to date. And now Garland, you know, it occurred to me the other day, Maria, they still haven't voted in the full House on the contempt for Garland. Mm. Now we have in the Judicial Watch case them coming forward admitting the transcript is an inaccurate, uh, is an is an accurate as it relates to the audio files they're hiding. They're coming up with ridiculous reasons for hiding the audio files, saying AI deep fakes are uh, likely as a result of it. Uh, this is it's it's crazy town, and Garland is is been sailing through this whole contempt fight thus far because Republicans don't want to spend too much time talking about these issues. It's amazing how much they're able to do against Donald Trump in terms of a literal abuse of power. Yet when you've got actual abuse of power targeting uh, Trump or targeting Congress, violations of law, uh, the Republicans in Congress don't seem much interested in, in going to the mat on it. It's, it's yeah. frustrating. Well, what I want to know is, is the issue of potential conspiracy around Trump going to come up today in the hearing? Because John Ratcliffe, former DNI, was with me on Sunday, and he firmly believes that this was all coordinated, that all of those prosecutors, from Jack Smith to Alvin Bragg to Fonnie Willis, Letitia James, they all met with White House counsel. Uh, before taking uh, taking uh, uh, Trump to court, so he's basically saying, "This is Joe Biden getting his political opponent down five months before an election." Watch John Radcliffe with me Sunday. Watch this. What happened in this case is that after Donald Trump announced he was going to run for president. Four different sets of prosecutors went to Joe Biden's White House to meet with Joe Biden's lawyers and his Department of Justice from Georgia, from New York, Letitia James, Jack Smith, shortly before he brought his indictments, and of course, Alvin Bragg, who not only met with Joe Biden, uh, Joe Biden's lawyers in the White House, he took one of Joe Biden's lawyers from the Department of Justice to have him bring this case. So, you know, all of these people in all of these jurisdictions, Maria, are proxies of the Biden White House. What about that, Tom? Can't this be documented and, and, and looked into? And what, where are the Republicans on this? Is this going to come up today in the uh, Merrick Garland hearing? I, I would certainly ask those types of questions. I mean, we have this case against Fannie Willis over her communications with the Biden DOJ. And rather than give us the documents, she went into default, went into default. Uh, so completely ignoring the lawsuit. Uh, in my view, this is part of a conspiracy uh, on, to deprive uh, President Trump of his civil rights under color of law. Certainly, a congressional investigation is, is uh, worth pursuing, and the next honest president should appoint a special counsel uh, to figure out what went on here. You don't have, effectively, the number three official at the Justice Department, a political appointee, go to a local prosecutor's office to prosecute a former president uh, without political motivation and um, uh, knowledge on the part of senior officials in the Biden White House and DOJ. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't pass the smell test.